a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. He judges us debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. These were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. Verbum Domini. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, the broken and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all, the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. Dominos vobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem, Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel in Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of Passovers was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were in secret. Some of the, the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, 
you know me and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me from whom you do not know is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, and no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. Verbum Domini. We welcome this morning a small group from the Diocese of St. Cloud, along with Father Stotz, making their Lenten pilgrimage. So pray for them while they're here at EWTN. And on a serious note, I'd like to just say that one of our first translators into Spanish, EWTN, passed away yesterday. His name is Ahmad Simeon. So pray for him and for the blessed repose of his soul. He worked for EWTN for over a decade translating this Mass into Spanish simultaneously. Many people don't know that, that this Mass is translated right now into Spanish, not later, but as the Mass is going on. And Ahmed did that for over a decade. So a lot of people are upset and grieving his loss. So really to pray for them and for the blessed repose of Ahmed's soul, Ahmed Simeon. The Gospel of St. John, as it progresses, slowly unveils what is said in the beginning lines in chapter 1 of his Gospel. That is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14, and the word was, was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Jesus is the word in Greek, logos, meaning that from he is from which everything is made and held together. In today's gospel, some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem raise the question about where Jesus is from. And a key word in the gospel to hang on to is from. Where is Jesus from? The inhabitants of Jerusalem recognize Jesus as the one claiming to teach and to heal with the authority of God. And this is why they are trying to kill him. He claimed that very same authority as the God who had revealed himself to Moses. The inhabitants of Jerusalem knew Jesus as coming from Nazareth and living and preaching and healing throughout the region of Galilee. St. John, throughout his gospel, highlights where Jesus is from, again, where he is from. Again, God the Son had pre-existence before the incarnation that took place 2,000 years ago. This is something that we should constantly come back to and try and wrap our minds around. And what does this mean? God the Son the second person of the Blessed Trinity existed before he took flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. God the Son existed from all eternity with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Now this may seem elementary and basic, but a lot of Christians and a lot of well-meaning Catholics do not believe this. I know I certainly did not learn this growing up in catechism class. Maybe the Baltimore, Catech Baltimore Catechism people have that pounded into you, but certainly my generation did not have this. Fundamental truth pounded into us as a foundation of 
who Jesus Christ is, that he is God. So when we are asked where Jesus Christ is from, there are, in a sense, in a sense, analogously, two answers. God the Son assumed a human nature by the power of the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary and was raised in a small town in Nazareth. So he is from Nazareth in an earthly sense. The man, Jesus Christ, was from that little town of Nazareth. But even before that, from all eternity in reality, the God-man, Jesus Christ, is from eternity. Does that make sense? I don't want to put anything over at your head at 7 o'clock this morning. But he's from all eternity. This is a fundamental truth that we as Christians need to constantly revisit all the time. We simply cannot think we have got it all figured out. The people who Jesus lived with preached to even those who witnessed miraculous healings failed to recognize this, failed to recognize the teaching when Jesus said where he was from, I have come from the Father, and I am equal to the Father. Jesus said to the people gathered in the temple area that were criticizing him, you know me, and also you know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own, but the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. Jesus knows that they do not know where he is from. At first, Jesus says, you know me and where I am from, meaning from Nazareth. Then he goes deeper, and then he reveals his existence from the Father, from all eternity, and the one who sent him, meaning that he's the son of the Father, not just the son of Joseph and Mary as they knew him in Nazareth, but that he is the eternal son, the only begotten son of the Father. And perhaps a more simple analogy will help. There was a moment in time where each one of us came into existence. Let's think about this. The moment of our conception, we came into existence. At each of our conceptions, we became a totally unique and a totally unrepeatable creation of Almighty God. Now, let me ask you a just simple question. Did you exist before your, in your conception? Did you exist? No. You did not exist before your conception. You only existed in the mind of God. Remember that beautiful passage from Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before I consecrated you, I dedicated you. But in the case of the God-man, Jesus Christ, his conception was unique. Unlike any other conception, also like the Blessed Virgin Mary's conception, the Immaculate Conception, but the conception of Jesus Christ, the God-man, is completely unique. He already existed as a divine person before he assumed a human nature. Again, I'm stretching your minds this morning. <laughs> he already existed before his conception, before he assumed a human nature. Before God manifested himself in the flesh, in Jesus Christ, he existed from all eternity. And when we think of eternity, 
there is no beginning and no end. When I would think about this as a little child, I felt like my brain was being twisted like a... To think that there's no beginning. Because we, we can think in terms of beginning and end. But when in God's time, there is no beginning and there is no end in eternity. See the difference where Christ comes from and where we come from. We did not exist in our personhood until the moment of our conception. But Christ's personhood is divine. Ours is human. Our personhood is human. Human persons have a moment in time where they begin to exist. The three persons of the divine blessed trinity, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit exist in all eternity. It may seem like I'm, re I'm repeating a few things over and over again in different ways, but this is good to pray about and get through our heads. Meaning that they do not have a beginning or an end. This is one of the principal reasons why we do not say that Jesus Christ was a human person, but that he is a divine person. Does that make sense? He is a divine person because his personhood existed from all eternity. He was already a person before he assumed a human nature. That's why we say Jesus Christ is a, is a divine person. We, on the other hand, have a moment in time where we come into existence at our conception, and we are human persons not divine persons, like the God-man, Jesus Christ. Divine person, Jesus Christ. Human person, all of us, including the Blessed Virgin Mary, the greatest and all model of all human persons. The one who received the merits of the redemption first. You know, there was a reason why Pope Francis started the Jubilee year on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. It was because Mary, as a human person, she received the benefits and the merits of the redemption first at her conception. And she was the first one to receive what? Mercy. She was the first one to be redeemed. Many people say, you Catholics don't believe that Mary's redeemed. You believe that she's immaculately conceived and perfect. No, Mary needed redemption. She needed a savior just like us, but Mary was redeemed in a more exalted fashion than any of us. What does she say in the Magnificat? My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Mary needed a Savior just like each one of us. And her Savior is her own divine Son, Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus Christ is a divine person, human nature. One person, two natures. Stretch your mind. Let's do some, you know. One person, Jesus Christ, two natures. Divine nature, human nature. And this is affirmed 
in the Nicene Creed when we profess on Sundays and solemnities. We profess, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from, again, from, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 